some extent, I believe that they did today. You know, it was measured. It was not a surprise. And I think most importantly, there was no sense that they're going to pull some magic trigger when unemployment hits a level that's predetermined. And I think that that was very uh, positive for the market. And when the Fed is on our side, we believe that that's a very positive tactical signal. So you see this as a risk on kind of market, right, Rebecca? Or, or keeping risk on, right? We, we already are fully invested. Uh, we are still overweight U.S. equities to some degree. And uh, so this is, this is reaffirmation of that type of, of positioning. Michael, as I, as I listened to uh, Mr. Kaplan there uh, express the radical thought that inflation <laughs> might run a quarter or a half point above 2%, I was prepared for them to say, we're ready to let it go to 4%. But he didn't say that at all. He said, oh, two and a quarter, two and a half. According to Mr. Kaplan, it, this seems like no big deal. Uh, that didn't sound like very much to me either, Tyler. Um, and just because the Fed says they're willing to tolerate greater levels of inflation doesn't mean that we'll get any, particularly with the unemployment rate north of 10 percent, with 27 million people still collecting jobless claims that's non-seasonally adjusted through early August. It's going to be hard to see uh, inflation anytime soon. Combine that with some of the structural forces of higher debt levels, aging demographics, and technology. And I, I really see it a, a real challenge to getting inflation at much higher levels than, uh, than we see kind of in the last decade or so. so. So as we turn the corner and talk about where to put our money now, Michael, has the Fed just basically said to bond investors, forget about it? So the Fed has created a very attractive uh, environment for holders of financial assets. They've protected the economy from recession, so we have modest growth, keeping rates very low, inflation continues to be below their target, and every time volatility strikes, they're willing to step in with ample liquidity and the smooth functioning of markets. So to me, that signals a, a pretty clear green as, as it relates to investors. So we like technology. That's defensive growth. Consumer discretionary. So as the labor market continues to uh, repair itself and we expect more fiscal policy to come through, we think the consumer will do well. And we'll pair that with staples where you'll still get some dividend income and some of a defensive posturing as well as the consumer continues to recover.